Dual lighting is a really cool effect that can add style to otherwise flat images. Today we'll look at how to create this effect, along with some tips for creating good starter images in mid-journey. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to look at how to create this dual lighting effect in Affinity Photo. It also works in Affinity Designer, but we'll look at Affinity Photo for the most part. Now, what I wanted to start with was to explain a little bit of a theory of how can we find images that are good for this type of effect. And then we'll look at how to create these starter images in Mid Journey, and also these prompts could be used in other AI generative tools as well. So I have this image here, and this image is a pretty good candidate for dual lighting. The key word here is dual. We do want something that implies two strong light sources. And I'm getting that in this image here because we have a light source on the left side. I'll highlight it here. You can see this left side light source. And then you can see there's also a light source on the right side. And what I really like is that we have these highlights on both sides of the form. So on the right side here, we have this strong highlight here that goes across the whole body. And then on the left, we also have this highlight over here. So altogether, this type of image is looking like a really good candidate. What also helps this technique a lot is when you have a very strong core shadow. Now a core shadow is the darkest shadow that runs through an object. On this form, we can see that the core shadow is here. And this makes it really easy to separate the two colors. So clearly this path through the form here is the darkest part of it. So these three components of an image, two strong light sources and a core shadow, will really help you get started with this technique much easier. And as time goes on, you can try experimenting with other images that just have more of a mid-tone feel. So here I am in mid-journey, and I'll just give you some examples of some of the terms I've found to be helpful for generating these kind of stark black and white images. And I'll put these prompts in the description down below if you want to copy and paste them really quickly. But basically things like strong backlighting and backlit will have a good effect on this. And by the way, AR means aspect ratio. I sometimes like to try wider frame images to just see what comes up. Down here I specified black and white. You don't have to specify black and white. We can always make our image black and white in Affinity Photo. But sometimes black and white can give you a more dramatic effect right out of the box with Mid Journey. High contrast, monochromatic seems to do very well also. I tried backlighting and side lighting. That can also be something that can help with this. So these are just some of the examples you can use. And really, the only limit is your imagination and what you want to see out there. This is mid-journey, but you can try these in Dolly or Stable Diffusion and also see what you get. And if you find any other interesting terms, leave a comment below and let the rest of us know. So I found a good candidate image and I exported it and I did some upscaling and you can see it meets a lot of our requirements. We have two strong light sources here on the left side and the right side and a pretty good core shadow down the middle. So the basis of this technique is using a gradient map. And if you want to learn about how to use gradient maps, you can check out my video on the subject. I'll link to it here. But a gradient map is a type of adjustment layer. And what I'll do is I'll click this button here and I'll add the gradient map adjustment, which is right here. Now these default options look kind of crazy at first, but all you really need to know is from left to right, it goes from dark to brightest. So the red is covering the black areas, the greens are the mid-tone, and the blues are the highlights. And of course, we don't want these colors, so the first thing I'll do is I'll delete the green. I'll take the red and I'll make it black. And you can already see we're starting to get back to our normal image here. And now this is the part where we choose what light we want. So I'm gonna make this the light on the left side. So I'll click the dot there. Now let's make it some type of cyan, and I'll close it there. I'll rename my gradient map here to cyan, just so we know which one is which. We'll be adding another one for the other color on the other side. So now what I can do is I can add a mask to my gradient map. And I do that by clicking the mask layer here. And actually the mask jumps up to the top, but I'll just click this and I'll drag it over the name cyan. And now this mask will mask out the gradient map. Since it's white, it's not having any effect at all. Now you may know that adjustment layers themselves act as a mask. So if I drew on this cyan adjustment layer, it would be masked itself. But I think there's more flexibility in adding an actual mask to it. So that's what I did. So I have my mask here and let's start to block out some of this light. So what I'll do is I'll select the mask. I'll select the paintbrush tool and I'll have a somewhat soft brush. Now remember that the way a mask works is if I paint black on something, it will hide that layer. So with black selected, if I paint, it's canceling out the effect of the adjustment. So the cyan is being removed. Let me undo that. Now this is where our core shadow comes into play. I want everything on the left side of our core shadow to be cyan and the right side, I'm gonna make it some type of red later on. So let's remove everything on the right side. And I'm considering the core shadow to be this kind of part here, just right through the middle of her face, down to the chest. And this is something that's really just trial and error. You know, experience helps with this. Some images are easier to do than others. Some are just, it's kind of ambiguous, like what's what, where the light's coming from. But with our masks, we can always touch things up easily later. 
So I think this is a good first pass and we can move on to the next step. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to duplicate this cyan adjustment layer. And I'll call it something like magenta. And let's change the color just so it's obvious. So I'll make it some type of red. Now here's the key part. What I'll do is I'll select the mask. I'll go to layer and I'll select invert. So this inverted the black and white of the mask. In other words, it means it's going to show what we were hiding before and hide what we were showing. So it's gonna basically take the mirror image of our layer below it. And that's what we want. We want the parts that aren't cyan to be magenta. And now what you can do is you can start experimenting with the blend modes a bit. Different blend modes on this adjustment are going to have different effects. And what looks good really depends on the value of your underlying image. I find hard light is often really good. Pin light is good too, we can try that. We can also adjust the colors easily if we choose so. That magenta is super strong, maybe we want something a little less so. Now you'll notice our background is being influenced by the color also. I kind of like that effect, but if you don't want it, all you have to do is mask it out. So I'll select the selection brush tool. And if I select it here, I'll make sure the hair doesn't get deselected. This is the cyan side. So all I have to do is go to my cyan mask, select a brush, and I can paint black over here. And now we're not getting that lighting effect there. But I kind of did like it there, so let's undo that. So I can see a few areas that need a little work. I'll touch it up and then we'll look at the final result. So here's my final result with the cyan. I ended up going with this color. With the red, I ended up doing this type of shade. And I did pin light for both of them. I also added some curves just to give it a little more punch. So we can see this is before, after. Before, after. That's just one of many ways to create a dual lighting effect using a gradient map. Let me know in the comments if this works for you and if you want to see any other techniques. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.